Today is the day. I told myself that today I was going to clean up my shed. And so, welcome to my shed cleaning out video. But first, I'm gonna have some coffee because I feel like that's something I need to tackle this job. Okay, I think, I think I can face it now. I think I can face it now. Okay, let's go. Son of a gun, I hear some noise in the shed. Boys, hey, hey, come here. Get out of there. Go, no, 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 midnight, no, get out. Oh my gosh, chaos, this is chaos. No, no. Come on. Get. Go on. Go on. Midnight. I just said no. Go on, boys. Get. Go on. No. No. Got the boys out of the shed. <laughs> Sons of guns. Get out of here. All right, you start by taking out all the trash. Um, let's just do a before shot real quick of what's happening in the shed. There are my kids dress up clothes are in here. It, midnight. Yeah, you better go. All right, no, no. This is embarrassing. I don't know how I got this bad. Good night. I said no, no, no. <sighs> yeah, this is just, uh, it's gotten real out of hand real quick, as sheds will do. Okay, clean out day. Boys, go. Get out, no, no. What if you need these someday? You don't wanna just throw them away. You could use them for something else. And then as soon as you throw them away, bam, you need them. Okay, I got it done. I'm not gonna say that I'm proud of it, but it's better. Um, the shed is definitely <laughs> where we kind of put everything. Um, so all of our frost fabric and plastics, greenhouse films and things go up here in the lofted area. We try to fold them up when we put them away, but that doesn't always happen. And then down here is where we store like a lot of our things for the floristry side. So things like vases down here, um, different wires, these little um, hydration tabs for, these are really good for zinnias. Uh, you can't put regular flower food in zinnia containers. They don't really like it. So we use these. We use craft paper to wrap our bouquets. So we have a nice roll of that. A million mason jar lids. So we, <laughs> So whenever I eventually get back into canning, I won't have a shortage of lids. I've got my tool belt. This is key. This is actually uh, just an antique leather workman belt. And I like it because it's kind of worn in. It's soft. Um, it's really sturdy. This is my little dibbler uh, that my husband made for me. But it's all ready to go. And then I attach it to this belt my grandma gave me from like the 60s. Butter knives, these are really good for and useful when it comes to planting. Um, we can just make little holes in the soil with those. Some dried flowers. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these, but I think I'm gonna make a wreath for spring, maybe using this lavender too. Hmm, not sure. Backup heater, this is really key. We always have a backup new heater ready to go during seed starting season because you never know when your heater is gonna go out and you don't wanna have to be scrambling to get a heater. All right, so here is some of the calendula that we grew and dried this summer. So we use the calendula petals uh, to steep our sweet almond oil in to make ourselves. So it's just a botanical salve and we make it with sweet almond oil, beeswax, shea butter, lavender, and um, so it's really fun. It's a nice little gift to make for friends. So we're just gonna go ahead and separate these petals out. So you just pull off the petals and they are this really pretty orange color. I 
I remembered that I had something I was going to try that I'm so excited about for soil blocking. Um, these are wool pellets. So these were sent to me um, by someone who does wool pelletizing. So if you don't already know, we have sheep. The same ones that were in the shed earlier. And um, there are companies that will make pellets out of their wool. And the benefit of wool pellets is that they retain moisture and they also are a great uh, slow release nitrogen in the garden. So a lot of people are starting to incorporate wool in the garden. So it would be a really great way for us to kind of close our loop with seed starting and use the sheep a little bit more. It doesn't hurt to shear the sheep, by the way. Um, so don't come at me. They actually do need to be sheared in order to um, keep them cool in the summer. Um, they've been bred to require shearing because for a long time people use sheep for wool. So you have to shear them. It's kind of part of uh, the humane thing to do when you have sheep, so it doesn't hurt them to shear them. And so what I wanna try is using the wool pellets as the binder in my soil blocking recipe. So I'm gonna start by sifting my soil. I don't want the big chunks that are in the potting soil. I don't want that in my soil blocks because it can mess up the soil block. So I just sift those out. And then you can see I'm left with kind of these big chunks. I do save those and use them in the garden. And then I have a nice sifted soil. So I'm gonna mix this with my wool pellets and I'm gonna try to press some blocks from it. I'm gonna add, I mean, it's a little too wet. I'm gonna add some more soil. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. I don't wanna to make too big of a batch because I'm just testing it still. And then I'm gonna incorporate some of these wool pellets. I did get them wet uh, before doing this so that that kind of helped break them down a little bit. But we're still gonna try to break them up a little bit as we add them. I will say the downside already, <laughs> I can tell, of using the pellets is that they definitely have a very distinct smell. Um, it smells like kind of a mix of manure and wet sweater. So, you know, that's a downside. For me, it does, I don't, that doesn't bother me because I start seeds in my greenhouse. Um, but if you were starting your seeds in your house, yeah, I don't know if you'd want this, like your house might smell kind of sheepy. All right, so we're gonna try to mix this as well as we can before we form it into blocks. These are the fiberglass trays from Epic Gardening. If you haven't grabbed some of those yet and you use soil block, I would recommend them. They're great because they fit all the different sizes of soil blocks. So we're gonna make um, a small and we're gonna make a large as well, actually. So I'm gonna see this. Because I always like to make sure that it's gonna fit. If it'll work for both the big and the small size, then it's a good mix. Nice. That actually made a great block. All right, big test is the mini. I'm gonna clean it off first because if you try to make blocks with a dirty blocker, it usually doesn't work very well. Nice. All right, so made a nice large block, made a nice small block. I'll press out a medium just for the heck of it so we can compare. Make sure it works for all sizes. Here we go. This is the Mama, Mama Bear Blocker, a good medium size that works for all different purposes. It's the one we use the most. The next step is to do a test round of seeds in here so that we can compare them, compare the recipe and make sure it's not too hot 
um, especially whenever we're adding something that has nitrogen in it, like wool, uh, we want to make sure that it's not going to burn our seedlings. So we'll do a test round on this before we move forward with recommending it, but pretty cool. Okay, I do kind of smell like sheep now. And I have to go pick up my kids from school. My poor children, man. They've got that mom, you know, in high school. They're going to be so embarrassed of me. That's okay. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> 